Hello my dudes, welcome back to All The Mods 9. Last episode we had a bit of an exploration session that was really fun. It's really cool to get out there in the world and see what kind of crazy stuff these new biomes have. We got a little bit of loot, not a crazy amount, but some nice, cool, interesting things that we can look into when we get into magic. This episode though, we're going to be looking into Create Tools. There's all kinds of crazy contraptions, armor and weaponry that Create has to offer. And now that my Create Workshop is up to speed, let's give it a go and see what we can do with the mod. I want to try and get a full set of Create Mechanical Armor. So welcome back to my workshop. Now I've been reading your comments and <laughs> yeah, some of you guys said what I could have done with the Mechanical Saw is just change the direction of the speed controller. And you guys are absolutely right. Sometimes the solution is staring you in the face and you don't even realize it. So yeah, I didn't do that, it's still going from right to left, but in future, yeah, remember, there's often different ways to solve your problems, you've really got to think outside the box. Now another thing you guys mentioned is that create ore processing doesn't end with crushing wheels. What you're supposed to do with the crushed ore is wash it, but I took a look at this. So here we have raw copper that we put through the crushing wheel. The crushing wheel gets you one crushed raw copper, and then that is used in bulk washing. However, the mod pack has kind of nerfed that, so one crushed raw copper would smelt into an ingot normally, but when you bulk wash it, it only creates nine copper nuggets, which basically translates to one ingot anyway. There's a chance we'll get some clay, but it's not really worth bothering with this complicated setup just to get clay. But different versions of Create do let you actually duplicate ore quite massively using the washing system. So I guess check your mod pack. If you're in all the mods 9 though, you're out of luck. Also, you guys said that I don't need to be using fresh lava over here. I can use magma blocks instead, and they'll still drop lava into these cauldrons. I think if I'd known that before, I would have used those blocks instead of lava, but we've already removed the wood, so we're going to keep the lava for the moment. If I get some magma blocks, though, I definitely will replace those. So let's get the clipboard out of the computer so we can write our to-do list for today's episode. Very exciting. So, what we're looking for is armor from Create. There's basically all kinds of crazy Create weaponry and gadgets that we can make. Like, for example, diving boots. Great for exploring the ocean, and in fact, it might be a great way for us to explore that underwater temple. There's also a netherite diving helmet, which it looks like is for diving into lava and swimming around in there. Oh, and it gives you better vision in lava as well. That sounds pretty cool. But we really need water breathing, so what's a copper diving helmet? Provides the water breathing effect. Amazing! Oh, but it does drain air pressure from the back tank, so we're going to make a copper diving set for sure. Also, check it out. Yeah, oh my god, there's jetpacks from Create. That's crazy! And it looks like there's some different variations on this. So the brass one uses fuel and water. The andesite jetpack just uses fuel, and the copper jetpack just uses water. Oh, no, I think the brass jetpack can use either. Okay, so we'll see if we can make one of those too. Now there's also some tools and weaponry here, a pickaxe and a sword, but these aren't quite as good as silent gear ones, and I'm not sure if they're worth making. There's fueling tanks that are going to be needed for the jetpack, so we'll make one of those. For sure, we've got these sturdy sheets, so that shouldn't be a problem. And obviously we're going to make a flamethrower today. And here we go. Also, there is these exoskeletons. So they come in copper, andesite, and brass editions. And we're going to go right to the top tier with this and try and make a brass exoskeleton. Now, I really should have done my research into this. This is pure exploration for us. Things definitely can and will go wrong this episode, but we'll roll with the punches and try and solve what comes up. So number one is going to be the flamethrower, because that thing is a beast. 
Number two is going to be the jetpack. And number three is going to be the exoskeleton. And number four is going to be the copper diving suit, because that sounds also pretty amazing. So boom, right, let's work on the flamethrower. We'll need a few bits and bobs, but we kind of have all of these things. A heat engine is going to need copper ingots, zinc nuggets, cogwheels, and cogwheels. There we go, cooking with gas. Let me remove this shield, because it's quite difficult to see what's going on with it. Boom, 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 boom. Now, it's probably going to take a few runs through this process to get the finished component. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to toss it back in. And we're also going to make a couple more because some of these might fail. There's a small chance for failure on these, but I've never seen anything fail yet. So I'm not quite sure. Maybe this mod has them disabled for now. I guess we'll find out. Oh, hey, yeah, look, we've already got two completed heat engines. So let's just put these last two back in. There you go. And yeah, no failures yet. That's pretty lucky. Or maybe, yeah, I, I don't feel like it's luck. I feel like, oh no, no, wait, it is luck because this one failed. Interesting. We've got three of these bad boys though. That's good to go. Next up, we need the sturdy sheets. Now we made a few of these before, but where was the sturdy sheet machine? That's right, downstairs. Oh man, yeah, 35, that's crazy. Great stuff. So we've got the sturdy sheets, we've got the heat engine, we have andesite alloy, and a blaze burner we should have left over. I made a lot of these, so, oh yeah, three. Okay, time to head over to the mechanical crafter. So it starts with some andesite alloy. Blaze burner, heat engine, and then sturdy sheets here, here, and here. We'll press go, double check the recipe. Yeah. Is this gonna work? I mean, it should do. Yeah, it looks like it's coming together. Oh, yeah. And, bada bing, bada boom, we have a flamethrower. Oh, amazing, right. Vroom. Okay, I don't want to use this inside. And it looks like I'm going to need some fuel for this. Okay, so we've made the flamethrower, but now we need fuel. Curious. Well, that does bring us on to some other items. I think the fueling tank here might be what we need. But how hard is this to make? Well, you just make a small one and then keep upgrading it with the sturdy sheets. I must have some leftover fluid tanks. I don't, but I can make one. Boom. We surround this with the sturdy sheets. And why stop with a small one? Let's go large. Go large or go home is what I always say. Boom. So now we have a large fueling tank. It is empty, but we have one. So how are we going to get fuel into this large fueling tank? Maybe we can use lava. Let's go and find a lava pool and see if that's the case. So we'll come over to this surface level lava pool. This is where I got the obsidian from before. Are we going to be able to fill this with fuel? Oh, it looks like we are. Let's fill this bad boy up to the brim with as much lava as it can handle. Oh, we are draining this lava lake completely. And it looks like it's full. Wow, yeah, yeah. Okay, now we're going to go to an area which doesn't have trees because we don't want to start a forest fire. Those are bad enough right now in real life. Oh man, speaking of the heat, are you guys at home sweating, sweating buckets? I know in like Australia, you guys are in winter. Oh man, I'm jealous. But over here in poor old England, I am sweating like crazy. My dog is just so hot. It's so sad. Anyway, if you watch this far into the video, I want you to put turn down the heat into the comment section and maybe God or whoever's listening, if anybody is, will hear us and give us a break from this savage heat. Anyway, here we go, the flamethrower and the fueling tank. Oh, it works! <laughs> okay, amazing! And it's shooting flames! Oh my God, it doesn't stop. <laughs> okay, so you right-click once and it starts shooting and you right-click again and it stops. 
Ooh, and how much fuel is this used? A fair amount. So we've got fuel for days, but can we actually now set fire to like a tree? Let's take a look. Burn this sucker down. No. What the hell? Why hasn't that worked? Well, maybe leaves don't burn, maybe logs do. No, it does look like it's set it on fire. Maybe we need to be closer. <laughs> uh, okay, I feel like we've doused this thing in plenty of flames, but we have not seen any fire from this thing. Okay, weird. Well, I'm using base settings for all the mods 9, so maybe the flamethrower has been disabled for some reason. Oh man, that's a real letdown, but we made it and it looks cool. Now it might be actually that it doesn't work on trees, but it does work on monsters. So maybe we can find a zombie to set fire to. Or failing that, maybe we have like a farm animal. Oh, I feel so cruel, but I think I might try and flamethrower this carbuncle. <laughs> come here, come here carbuncle. Got a little flamethrower with your name on it. Oh yes! It sets fire to carbuncles at least. So it looks like it only works on monsters and it might be pretty cool. Oh look, there's a dude. Ripperoni and pepperoni, it's time to flame you! Oh man, yeah. So it's, it's very good for roasting sheep and cows. In fact, that reminds me, we've got a bit of a population problem going on over at our farm. We've got way too many sheep, so maybe it's time to flame these dudes. Now my create sign is very, very, very cool, but we've turned it off for the moment just to save on the lag, because create can create a lot of lag. Okay, are you ready to set fire to a whole bunch of sheep? Oh my god. Roasty! Oh yeah, cull the numbers. Oh my god, I feel like we probably should have got some wool from these guys first, but you know what? This is fine. Now, do we get cooked meat from these mobs as well? Because they did die by fire. Oh yeah, we do! Cooked mutton! Amazing! Replace that with the steak, and we'll get a fresh food added to our list. Very cool. So now we've kind of evened the populations a bit, and uh, yeah, reduced our sheep numbers. So the flamethrower, it works! Amazing! Cross it off the list. Now next up, the jetpack. How difficult is this going to be to make? Oh, I imagine pretty crazy. How do you do it? Mechanical crafting? No. This is all pretty cool. We've got a steam engine, I think. We made one. If not, we've got incomplete steam engines for days. And then the final run through. This should give us all of the steam engines we're ever going to need. And again, also, no failures here, yet. Or was that a failure? Oh yeah, yeah, one failure. But you know what, that's a pretty good rate. Boom, eight steam engines. So the steam engines, some brass ingots, and a site alloy, encased fans. Encased fans could be tricky, we'll need these propellers back. Put them in. Boom, make me some, oh, we need some more shafts as well. Make me some encased fans. And now we just need some brass. Now have I made some of this? Oh yeah, loads. Okay, let's go over to the create mechanical crafters and make the jetpack. So there go the fans. There goes the alloy. Turn it on and let's get ourselves a jetpack. Oh yeah, fingers crossed this works. I think I got the recipe right. Bada bing bada boom. There it is, the jetpack. Boom, okay, well I've got a fuel tank now full of lava. I'm not sure if that's the correct fuel, but let's put on this brass jetpack. Now, it takes over your chest slot, but it does have some armor. In fact, it has six armor, so it's almost as good as our chest plate anyway. 
As you can see, fuel is being added from our tank automatically. So maybe there's a tank from another mod. Oh, no, no, wait, look. We can use a filling tank from Create as well. These aren't too tricky to make. They just need a lot of copper. Okay, let's do it. So you put the tank in the crafting grid and it becomes a small filling tank. Then you surround that tank with copper sheets. Wait, that is the recipe. Oh no, then you surround it by... with copper bars. Okay, complicated. And there we go. A maximum sized filling tank. So let's go and get some more lava and water and give this thing a test run. And again, yeah, we're coming over to our old friend, the lava hole, because there's still a little bit left in here. There we go, full to the brim, or is it? Oh no, because as we fill the tank, it's automatically going into the jetpack. Okay, very cool. Let's get some more of this stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, right, I'm fireproof. I keep forgetting that. So handy, so, so handy, honestly. The fire ward ring, so useful. The best thing I could have found. Time to fill up the filling tank with some water. This should be much easier. Yeah, oh, listen to that sound though. That's such a nice sound. Some people like ASMR and let me know in the comment section if this is a nice ASMR sound for you. Oh man, this can take a lot of water though. Oh no, I think the problem is, like as soon as it drains just a little bit, it fills the tank up with a brand new fresh bit of water. Anyway, we'll get this to max because we want a fully fueled jetpack. Almost there. Now I'm assuming that it needs both fuel and water and when it gets to max, that'll work. I'm not quite sure why uh, other versions of jetpacks... Oh wait, look! It works! <laughs> oh man, I didn't even uh, didn't even need to press space in air. I just hold down space and I float up. Amazing, but the big question is what's the draw on fuel? Up we go. Oh man, now it's got a maximum height of 27 blocks it says, so you can't fly around forever. And if we activate sneaking, oh no, careful. Space while sneaking, activate hover mode. Yeah, oh, and we're just hovering slowly. Let's take a look at this. Oh, look at the gears on the back. This looks super amazing. There we go. There's a screenshot for the thumbnails. Oh my god, amazing. So how much fuel is this used? It's automatically draining from the tank as we fly around. And it's not too expensive. Look, we've only lost like about 500, 700 fuel there. The jetpack is still full now because it's automatically draining. Oh my god, that's amazing. Now, it does moving at speed, because you can hold down uh, run while you fly, does this use a lot more? No, it hasn't used that much extra fuel or water. Oh man, yeah, look at this, just floating around the colony with a jetpack. This is freaking amazing. This is going to speed up things like crazy. In fact, I should have crafted this before I went exploring because this makes things so easy, doesn't it? Oh my god, look at that sunset. Beautiful. Bonk, hello colonists, just jetting through, don't mind me. Oh, so cool. This is amazing. This is amazing. Almost as good as an evil craft broom. Oh man, yeah. Love it. I love this to bits. So let's cross off some things from the list. Jetpack. Next up, we're going to try and make the exoskeleton. This promises to be like a heavy duty armor setup, I guess. It's got eight armor, allows the wielder to boost his physical abilities. You can fight with an enemy with bare hands and dig faster in no time, thanks to this well done mechanism. Needs water and fuel again, but we've got like full tanks of that, shouldn't be a problem. And when worn provides haste and strength, slowly consuming fuel and water, amazing. Oh, well, let's get this mother trucker built. Okay, so we need a steam engine, which we've got. Brass, no sweat, and a block of brass, again, no sweat. The only question here is the flywheel. But this is super easy to make as well. All right, let's do it. 
Let's go and make the exoskeleton. Oh yeah, I'm really, I'm really glad I checked out these uh, tools, armors, and little kind of create contraptions because they really do spice up gameplay. I should have made them ages ago. What is tricky though is remembering the recipes. So it's two L shapes, upside down Ls, the flywheel in the middle. The flywheel in the middle, upside down L shapes. Pull the trigger. Oh yeah, the exoskeleton. Can't wait to test this out. We really are celebrating the fruits of our labor now. We've spent so long messing around in Create, and these tools and gadgets are exactly the reason why. Okay, the exoskeleton. Let's try putting this on. Now it does overlap the jetpack, and I don't think there's any way to combine the jetpack with the exoskeleton. Oh, but look at this. The exoskeleton can actually be used as a chest plate. Oh man, can you imagine all of our guards decked to the nines with a brass exoskeleton suit? That sounds pretty amazing. I'm going to make full brass exoskeletons for all of our guards. No jetpacks, because I don't trust you guys with a jetpack at all. But I do reckon an exoskeleton on, on all of our guards is going to increase their fighting capacity massively. Okay, so the exoskeleton in position. Let's see what this looks like. Oh yeah, look at this. The flywheel on the back looks crazy. Very snazzy looking. I only wish there were some create pants. But you know what? Before we go any further, I do want to complete the look. So I'm going to go and make some brass leggings and helmet. But brass is a little bit worse than what we've got on, so we're just going to use the cosmetic slot for the looks. Oh my god, I look so freaking cool! This is amazing! Oh yeah, the set looks fantastic. The whoopee cushion though, oh I feel like I wanna I wanna hide that because it does ruin the look a little bit. And uh, those claws are weird, but that's okay. Well okay, what does this do? Basically, let's give it a go. So here we go, it's got full fuel and it's got full water. It has a haste and strength effect. Strength plus three attack damage, very cool. Oh right, and haste is only applicable to attack speed. But this is amazing, so it looks like it soups up whatever weapon we're using as well. So what about the digging speed? Can I dig now with just my hands? Uh, no, it's no quicker digging with your fists, but is it quicker digging with a Paxel now? Oh my god, yeah, this is lightning quick. But dirt is dirt. What about stone with my pickaxe? I don't know, you know. It feels quicker. So we're going to say it is. Man, the exoskeleton. What an amazing craft. We're going to get all of our colonists souped up with this because, man, 10% attack speed and 3 strength and 3 attack damage on all of our dudes plus the massive injection of 8 armor going to make our dudes unkillable. And we'll also complete the set by giving them brass, leggings, and boots. Because I think, yeah, Mind Colony says this can also be used. Oh, amazing! Well, I'm going to need a lot more brass. And there we go, the mechanical arm hard at work. But to speed things up, let's go and soup up our steam engines. And there we go, now the mechanical arm is moving at the speed of light and the mixer. There we go, give you some fuel. And you can make us all these lovely brass nuggets. Oh yeah. So good, so so good. Our guards are going to be decked up to the nines. So that is the exoskeleton done. The last thing I want to do on my list is make the diving suit because this is going to mean we can explore this bad boy over here. That's right, the underwater temple armed with some of Create's finest weaponry and armor. I think I might be able to tackle the perils of the deep. Oh my god, in fact, forget the perils of the deep. I can attack the perils of the colony. Raiders reported northwest of Redwood Shores. Boom, I've got my piercing ender, 
I've got my jetpack on. I can switch to the exoskeleton when we get close. Let's go and roast some dudes. So, northwest. Where are you, mother truckers? Can't hide from me. Oh my god, no! Mixed a long tip! What the hell? Where did you- where did you die? Where did he die? A mob? I don't even think that was a barbarian. Oh my god, he died! At the university? What killed him here? I don't see any barbarians anywhere. What- what the actual hell happened there? We need to get these guys in full armor as soon as possible. Aha! Here they are! They finally made it to the colony. Okay, so switch to... Oh, wait, wait, guys, wait for me, wait for me, please. Please, I'm not ready. Okay, now I've got my exoskeleton on. Let's see the damage. Oh my god, yeah, three hits. Look at the range as well. I can hit these guys from miles away, or are they hitting each other? And also, I'm taking almost no damage. Close one. Wait, one raider left? Oh my god, he's shooting bows at me. Have some mouton. Luckily this guy's aim is as bad as, well, mine. Nice try, sucker. Here I come. Oh my god, he can't even hit me at point blank. Here we go. Hooray! Oh, and we do lament the loss of Mixter Longtit. Oh my god. But to make sure this never happens again, we're going to have to give our guards full brass exoskeleton armor. It's going to be amazing, though. Also, to complete the set, it might be worth giving them brass weaponry, too. Yeah, I think some blazing cleavers. They're a bit crappy for us, but they could be amazing for our guards. So, let's get some powdered obsidian and some gold blades. So we can just toss these in and it'll make them as well as the bronze. That's pretty cool. Oh man, it's a blazing sword production line. That's amazing. And boom, we can go and give these to our guards now to soup them up. What is it? There we go, recruit Kayoshi. Boom. Welcome to the colony. You'll make a brave, brave knight. Ah, strongborn Larone though. Maybe you're cheap enough. Eh, gold ingots. You know what? We'll go and grab some because I do have a fair bit of gold. Oh, it's on me already. Okay, cool. I'll have to go and grab some more, but gold, not too hard to find. To Welcome to the colony. Now we'll go and get them set up as guards. Okie dokie. Now, another thing we're going to want to do is be able to summon our guards. So if you go to Mine Colonies here, we can actually create a banner of summoning. Where is it? Somewhere in here, I'm sure. Here we go, the rallying banner. Now, it's not cheap to make. We're going to need guard towers. It's got to be a yellow banner as well. Sticks and whatever, but I think we can do all of this. Boom, so there we go, a rallying banner. Now, we only actually need one. We can add multiple guard towers to this banner. So let's go and find these guard towers, right-click on the block with the banner, and then they get attached to that banner. Boom, guard tower added to the list. Okay, here we go, the full brass armor and the blazing cleavers. Let's bring all of our... Boys to the yard. Rally the guards. They're answering my call. And they should come even though they don't have weapons. Or at least I'm hoping they do. And they're supposed to come really, really, really quickly. But they're not. In fact, he's still... Oh my god. We need to give them the weapons before they'll even answer the call. That's a bit of a shame. Well, I'll go around, give them all of this stuff, and then rally them so that we can have like a bit of a lineup. A bit of a commander's inspection. Ah, uh, one of them's arrived at least, and it's Sklerbitha Jester, but it looks like, um, they don't actually- Oh yeah, she came because she had a sword. It looks like this armor is a bit high level for them. So we're gonna have to upgrade their levels. And the only way we do that is by improving the guard towers. So getting these to level 2, maybe 3, is I think what we're gonna need to do. Anyway, that is a problem for later. Our guards are all fully geared up, at least they will be. Let's work on the other create thing, which is the diving suit. 
So here we go, a copper diving helmet. Very simple to make, oh my god. And copper diving boots. Boom. Equally easy to make. So the diving boots don't need a fuel, they're just heavy, they let you go around under the sea quite quickly. The jetpack lets you move quickly underwater as well, so that's useful to have. The copper diving helmet, however, drains air pressure from the back tank. So we need to make a back tank as well. So there we go, but the quiz now is, how do we actually get air into our copper back tank? So you can, ah, I see, so it becomes a block that you can place, and it pressure, oh, okay. So we put this on the floor, and when powered by kinetics, as in these cogs on the back, I believe it um, sucks air in on its own. Well, let's pick it up and see if we can work this out. So this gearbox over here is a vertical one. If we put the back tank here, yeah, it's slowly getting air. Yeah, here we go. So basically we can fuel these blaze burners now. To soup up the speed, and yeah, this is going to fill the back tank much quicker. It's still not lightning quick, but it's a slight speed increase, and that's enough for us. Yeah, there we go. So maybe we can get like a speed controller set up to go at max speed, like max, max speed, and then put the copper back tank underneath that to get the quickest amount of oxygen into this back tank. But for now, I reckon four and a half minutes is going to be fine, so we're just going to dig this up and go and take it for a joyride. Okay, so we're on the boat. We've got the diving helmet equipped. We'll put the back tank on now. The diving boots and just some regular old iron leggings. Not really the smartest thing for diving, but what are you going to do? And oh yeah, look, you sink so quickly. Now you've got to be careful because while you're wearing the diving boots, you can't actually swim up at all. But this is pretty amazing. We get like a readout down the bottom that shows us how much air we have left which means we don't have to go into our inventory all the time and see there. Amazing! And now we can slowly move towards... Oh, it's pretty dark down here, isn't it? Towards the underwater temple. Oh, man, amazing! But I do want to wait before we do that because there's some really rude dudes over there. Oh, man, super amazing. Well, we're going to end the episode underwater today for a bit of a change. Thank you for watching this episode of All The Mods 9. This episode, we took a look at all of the really cool armor and craftables that Create has to offer. We've also got our guards almost ready to tackle whatever's going to come at them, but we do need them to be higher level to equip some of that Create goodness. Next episode, I think I might have to devote to the colony because we need our buildings to be level 2. I want our guards tooled up and ready for the next raid, but also I want the buildings to look better, and getting to level 2 is something that we've put off for way too long. I just got way too embroiled in Create. Again though, a massive thank you for watching. If you've watched this far, I want you to put to the moon into the comment section, because I guess that's where we're going with the jetpack, maybe? Well no, I think 27 blocks isn't quite the moon, but it's on its way. Anyway, a massive thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.